What the f is that? Welcome back to Night in the Woods. Last time we played, we learned some more about Greg's relationship. We also talked about anxiety and how anxiety can impact a lot from drinking caffeine to how we can question our relationship. So many things, just everything. We talked about everything last time. Having said that, let's wake me up. It's always an experience. I have missed this game and it's been a couple days since I've played. Happy Halloween, dude. Ooh, I remember the game. The game has like been leading up to hunting season. I didn't, I didn't put two and two together about Halloween. Get spooked or something. I get wrecked. A wee message. Annual harvest play tonight at the old pickaxe. Come out and see the haunted history of Possum Springs. So, so Bay, I've been told you say it this B, which would make more sense because it is not Bay and May, which those letters also sound very similar. It's like B and and May, like Beatrice and May. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shark so much. <laughs> okay, so this is all in the bedroom. Except for that base, which I am not, I'm not touching that. I've definitely grown quite a bit since then. Probably. A little bit taller. A regular bit wider. What does that mean? My grand my granddad said I was sturdy. <laughs> is that like screw it, I am sturdy. <laughs> is that a polite way to say like Grown fatter? When it comes to weight, there's so much. <laughs> My brain would say heaviness, and that's that's not a pun. But like the words words that come along with with fat or weight or things like that have so much implications behind them. I know that when I was raised, uh, like my family taught me that the word fat was like a bad word. As in, like, don't call someone fat. That can be very insulting. Which, I mean, it can be based on someone's individual perception of that word. But at the same time, so much of this is also kind of fueled by our culture's perception and how our culture views these things. Because a lot of times there's this kind of... Oh, the boxes are gone. This is kind of... I think fat phobia. And this there's this fear of being fat, which kind of means that our culture... Our culture continues this idea that being bigger is is being bigger is badder. And so then we avoid everything that has to do with being heavier. And we avoid all conversations with it. And avoidance is not really a good thing. What do you have under your house, May? This is a joke, but is this where you hide the dead bodies? Oh, shit. There was that combination. There was something about a, a combination. Oh, wait. <laughs> I know how to open this. Left 45, right 100. Okay. 45, 100. I just had a piece of paper the other day. Right. One. Right 15. Okay. Thanks, Granddad. <laughs> it's opening. Oh, I didn't have to write that down. What the hell? It's an old tooth. Yeah, that's a tooth. Like, when you have your baby teeth fall out and your parents keep it for reasons. Granddad put a tooth in a safe in the basement. Is it literally from a body that your grandfather found? Was that, like, not... Was that an ironic joke? <laughs> well, never know when you'll need an extra tooth. What the fuck? You and me, tooth, we're gonna go far. I'll take it. What is happening? Mysterious tooth. Is this- is this it? What?! Was this like the crawl space under the house? Wait, that wouldn't make sense. It would have to be the attic because we're- no, we can't- it can't be the attic either. I'm very confused logistically where this is in the house because this is the attic. And it, we're still on the second floor, so it can't be the basement, even though this is what my brain tells me that it is. Is it, is it like a crawl space underneath the basement? Oh, 
weird. Or like how some houses have that like tiny small hole that goes somewhere. Oh wow, okay. Hey trash bird. Oh, here are the boxes. <laughs> boxes are right down here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey mom. Mm-hmm. Um, you okay or what's wrong? Yeah, like this is the most quiet the mom's been. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. <laughs> You're lying. So when when something happened at college and May like doesn't want to talk about it, her parents gave her the give her the space to be like, okay, like we're here when you want to talk. <laughs> when her mom has something wrong, May's just like, you're lying and you need to tell me. <laughs> it's not quite the same reciprocal nature. <laughs> Which I think is interesting too, because we get used to our parents giving us the support and then I, I just think it's interesting that nature of like parents to children. I don't think we usually think of children having to give parents the same stuff back. Although I think that changes depending on our age. Like once we're adults, there's still this weirdness of like, yes, you're still my parent, but when do I treat you like other adults? Do we ever treat them like regular adults? I think a lot of this varies depending on the family. Families are weird. <laughs> so incredibly weird. It, it, as far as like expectations. You know, you have some of those, some of these families are kind of like, you need to respect me no matter what. Like, no matter what happens, because I'm your elder, you need to respect me. But then there are other families where it's kind of like, uh, no, we can have more conversations and we can talk about, we can talk about more things. Almost like this idea that respect isn't is earned kind of a thing. And and that's what I that's what comes to my mind when I think of that families are so weird. So honey, do you feel like talking about school yet? Whoa. <laughs> so like May's mom kind of throws it back at her. Not throws it back at her. This doesn't feel malicious, I guess. It's almost kind of like if you can have things that you don't want to talk about, I can have things that I don't want to talk about. Um, okay, or not really. <laughs> Not really. Any idea of when you might want to do that? Because, honey, I am all ears. I really am dying to find out why you decided to up and abandon all the plans we'd made as a family. Jeez, Mom. This feels like the most confrontational May's mom has been. Where is this coming from? You know, you're the first Borowski to go to college like the first person in her family to go to college so this is kind of painting this picture of I picture it like a mining town like a mining town where she's the first one who has the ability or the privilege to go off to college and that can be so much pressure because like well now now you have to succeed I mean you don't have to but that's how it can feel it feels like you're not only going to college but your entire family is going to college, I guess. That's, that's how I mentally picture it. And so May had stuff that happened at college, wasn't able to finish college, which is, it's her life, right? But now there's this kind of added pressure and her mom is even talking about like, this was a family decision, right? So there's that added weight. I only heard that since I was like six. So kind of growing up in this family where we have heard for our entire lives that this is this expectation. We are expected to go to college. We are expect and, and when we say that, we don't talk about college as though we just go. Usually when we go to college, there's this inherent expectation that we also graduate college. They, they go hand in hand. Well, honey, we've been planning for it since you were born. So like the family has been planning for it in the sense of like financials. Like I want to, I've said this before that it, you know, the job of a parent is to uh, provide, try to try to give more to their kids. Not not in the sense of objects, but like try to help their kids be happier and healthier than they were, right? And so for this family, that was college. Like I've been planning for this since you were born. I want to give you something that I didn't have. So this this is how I'm doing it. I spent a good 18 years and got all, to all kinds of trouble just for you to decide you'd rather be here. 
might as well have taken all that effort and money and worry and dumped it into a hole. <sighs> so this implication that like all of like 18 years is wasted and these these are very heavy implications. Like this is so this is a, a lot of pressure and these words have meaning. And I think I, I've talked a lot about this family as though they're very supportive and they, they really have been. I mean, that was at least my first impression. And when that's my first impression of a family. I really, it makes me want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Because we don't always have families out there that are so supportive. So I feel this urge to kind of cling to it. Like, please please let that first impression be good please let this be a family that is incredibly supportive um and so that does i i guess i want to recognize that is i am giving them so much benefit of the doubt just because of that like that is my want that is my desire and i also want to put out there that we can have incredibly supportive families who say things you know, like where there are still arguments, there are still these moments where in incredibly heavy words are thrown around. And that can still be impactful. Like those those arguments, those those words can still make an impact on us. It, like, especially as the kids, right? That can still impact us. And I think then that becomes an incredibly subjective thing, an incredibly personal thing to decide. How do I feel about, about my family at this point? Like, do I feel like my family is overall supportive? As in like, do the do the overall things from my family make up for it? I guess uh, the those those moments that were not so shitty or those I don't even want to say they're shitty. I guess uh, the these examples that I'm thinking of. <clears throat> so let's say this is like the the only kind of argument where May's mom says something like this. Do these small moments take away from overall support? That is something that I feel like May would have to decide for herself, right? This is like her life and her memories and how she thinks of her family. And I think this is something that we have to decide for our, ourselves when it's our life and our family as far as how how we, we see our family. Because I do think that there can be these supportive families out there. And we are all human. We're all growing, learning, changing. And so even incredibly supportive families are going to have moments where like shit gets said and that shit can stick to kids still but then we have to still decide you know how we feel about that family and I say that because I come from this perspective of I would never want to tell someone how they feel about something that feels really minimizing so I would never want to tell someone like your family is good or your family is bad I feel like that's a decision we all have to make about our own family Are you, like, having one of your mood swings again? <sighs> I can't tell if that's, like, a... The word defensive comes to mind, but sometimes when we feel attacked, we we kind of attack back. So I can't tell if the word mood swing is like that, where it, like, May feels attacked and is like, well, screw you, I'm just gonna, like, fight back. Or if that's actually a comment on how May's mom maybe has her own mental health stuff, mental health stuff. Ugh, like I'm the moody one in this house. You are the moody one in this house. Well, enjoy this house while we still have it. Shit. What? What's happening to this house? Maybe it should, maybe it just isn't where we should be. Mom, this isn't funny. Or you know what? F off. Wow. You know, discussions aren't going well when that's an option. Yeah, this isn't funny. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything. Why start now? <sighs> that kind of implies that just because we're not doing something, like, physical or action-wise, we don't care. And these are two very different things. Sometimes, sometimes we're not doing things that, again, society views as, as traditional measures of, of success. Sometimes we're not doing these things because it's like we care too much. So 
so we care so much about it being perfect or being the right choice or whatever. And that paralyzes us. And then we get stuck not doing anything. And from the outside, it's so easy to look at that and say, oh, well, you don't care. That's why you're not doing anything. Or you're just not motivated enough. Or you're lazy. Like these are very heavy words that get thrown around a lot for this, this thing when we see it from the outside. But from the inside, there's often a lot of chaos that goes on because we're overthinking or we are <laughs> essentially caring too much is, is what comes to mind. And it's hard for me to say too much because how do we decide what is too much? But kind of that idea of like, we're caring so much that we get caught in overthinking about it or caught in getting paralyzed in the decision making. So it's not, these are two different concepts. Taking action is completely different from whether we care or not. Go off and do whatever it is you do. You know what? Maybe if I'd had more examples of, you know, getting out and making something of myself. So this point in this argument very much feels like the point where it's like we are feeling attacked. We're feeling attacked personally and we're just going to lash out like a cornered animal or something like that where it's like I'm injured and I'm just going to lash out. And this is the kind of thing where we often probably say things that we regret later because they're just said in anger. They're said in, in spite, maybe. And I think it's it feels like it's worse with family because family knows exactly what buttons to push. So May probably knows exactly what to say to her mom to make her mom feel hurt and, and vice versa, right? Like her mom knows exactly what to say to May to make May feel hurt. And it's kind of this idea that family knows what buttons to push because they put them there. So if May is saying that, that tells me that May probably knows that her mom cares a lot about being a mom, which is really huge in our society. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure to be the perfect mom. But like May's mom has already told us this in this discussion, this idea of I cared so much about being a good mom or like ab about you and your future in general that I saved up 18 years for you to go to college. And so May's kind of like, well, you know, if I had a better example of, of that. Better than saving up 18 years for, for your kid to go to college, then maybe I would have made better choices. So like blaming her for dropping out of college. And I feel like this is the kind of thing where later on they'll, they'll probably apologize for this kind of stuff. And I feel like when we feel like we're getting to this point in discussions, it's probably a sign that maybe stepping away earlier in the discussion is probably a good idea. Like give everybody a chance to cool off and then come back to the discussion at a later time to kind of resolve things when emotions aren't so high is probably a good idea. The hard part about that is I feel like everybody has to consent to that. So let's say hypothetically May just like <laughs> walked off or said like, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to cool off. You know, I'm going to, for, for lack of a better term, I'm going to practice my coping skills. If her mom didn't agree or didn't consent in her own way to that, then that by itself would cause more arguments because then her mom could say, um, like, how dare you walk away from me? Her mom could follow her and all of those things inherently could cause more arguments. So it, it takes two to tango when it comes to trying to calm down and take breaks and return to the conversation later too. So that by itself is often really helpful to talk about to when it comes to talking to our partners about this, talking to family about this, to be able to say, hey, I've noticed that we... <laughs> When we argue, when we have discussions and they get really heated, we say things that we forget, that we regret and we don't mean. So can we find a way to work on these things before they get so heated and then try to problem solve those things together? That's often incredibly helpful because then like everybody's involved in creating the solution to this problem, that kind of thing. That was an incredible tangent, but all of this stuff is what comes to mind with this discussion. There's a, there's so much here. No, no, you do not get to. The mom was like trying to set this boundary of you don't get to insult me that way. Maybe you wanted me to get out of here because you never got around to doing it yourself. Fuck. Maybe I'm just the most recent failure. Ooh, that word failure. In the line of failures that is our family. May, I feel like you're going to regret that. I'm leaving now. <laughs>
So I take it we can't continue this conversation. I do feel like that's a good time to leave. I feel like we should have left a little earlier. Versus, um, continuing, continuing that the way we did. That was, that was a lot. That's going to be a thing later on. I don't feel like we can just say things like that and then just act like it never happened. Usually we have to... That comes back in some way, shape, or form. Also, how many times do you think May's family has repaired that mailbox? I also feel like these kinds of those kinds of arguments, discussions, whatever kind of word we want to use for that, I feel like they linger with us the whole day. Like it's hard to just step out of step out of our house and say, okay, I'm just gonna leave that at the door. Like I imagine May right now would be sitting there going like, ooh, am I a failure? Am I not a failure? Like, what's it gonna be like when I get home? Do, when do I wanna go home? And, like what time can I go home and mom will be in bed and then I don't have to talk to her. <sighs> Sometimes if that kind of stuff happens so early in the day too, it feels like it, it just, it feels like it sets the mood for the whole day. When the flood happened that one year, this pole fell over, and I was scared and somehow electrify the water all over the neighborhood, and it'd stay that way. I don't think that's how electricity works. And I was kind of afraid of taking a shower or turning on the faucet for weeks. Oh, oh, there's something else here still. After the flood, it laid in our yard for two weeks. Wow, how long does it usually take places to repair telephone, telephone? Telephone poles. Like, a big dead thing. But then they put it back up. And I could see it from my window at night. And it felt spooky for some reason. <laughs> like we got used to it not being there and then it was there. I guess I kind of mentally picture, um, like in scary movies, it usually feels like for kids, they always have the tree that looks like the branches look like fingers looming outside the window. Only it's a telephone pyre. Telephone pole. Not a pyre, a pole. Spooky pole. Undead friend watching me from the curb. <laughs> We could see it that way. Also, at what point would like AT and T get after me, like jumping on wires? That AT and T was like the only, the only landline telephone company I could think of. <laughs> Duh! Sorry, sorry. I knew it was there. I knew it was happening as soon as I made the jump. Whew. Okay. I don't know why I'm jumping over here. There's there's like nothing here. Hey Summers. Quo decorations! Oh the pumpkins have little ears. Girl, you can't mess around on Halloween. Jeez. Wanna hear a new poem? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Bats and moon against the gloom. The night is black. I made a snack. Cool. I microwaved a pizza I saved. Though cold pizza cold is breakfast gold. That's so true. It really happened. I believe you. Big Halloween fan here. Yeah, me too, obviously. You're you going to harvest? Nah, staying here for the trick-or-treaters. You are a saint. Harvest is done. Really? I love it. Or I mean, are you eight years old? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I thought that was one of those cutscenes where it just kept going. And it's like, eh, are you eight years old? Are you? How do I get on your porch? There we go. I couldn't figure it out, which I'm sure they were quite pleased with. Don't touch my pumpkin. Well, now you know I want to. This, this pumpkin? Or this one? Or this one right here? Oh, I'm so obstinate. Hi. <laughs> there's a lot of leaves. I also just realized there's a row of houses, like, in the foreground. I have to steal food for my miracle rats. I have a responsibility. I'm a parent now. I bet some rat babies love a delicious pretzel. I bet you're right. I also bet that I'm horrible at stealing. I just gotta play it safe. Pretend I paid. 
I can drop it? Did not, did not know that. So if I just dropped it now, oh, I can't just drop it into the pocket. That would have, that would have been way easier. I'm horrible at stealing. Hey, hands off. <laughs> Sorry. I'm the worst stealer ever. I suppose this is a good thing. No, I mean, I suppose it's good if it stops me from stealing in the real world bad in general? Who are you? Hey, where is everybody? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, we used to do that awesome. Well, you go easy on my street. Oh, is it like egging? Deal. Okay, that was uh, a good talk. So can these parents not pay their bills, like their mortgage and stuff? And like... Potentially, they have a hard time with that because of uh, paying the college bills. I also feel like there's an added context of this to if, uh, as far as like, I can't help but wonder if, like, what kind of college May went to? Like, an associate's degree, not an associate's degree, but like, I think this is cheaper to get an associate's degree at a local community college first and then go back and get a four-year degree somewhere else. It's considerably cheaper than like, you know, some of these super uber prestigious colleges. What's going on here? That Ferris wheel looks like a nightmare. Thanks, Colleen. That was helpful. What's wrong with it? I don't trust giant load-bearing machines. You can assemble and disassemble in one day. It's so like no IKEA furniture? It's the world record. We've always had a hit record at the harvest. Yeah, since 1984. Maybe that's a clue that we should retire it. Shut up, Andrew. Jeez. Okay, everyone, let's just take a step back and cool down. We are going to have the hit record at our harvest tonight. Fine then, I'll send all lawsuits your way. Bring it, Colleen. I don't think they usually keep talking. Usually it's like, roll out troops. Oh, the gun, huh? Um, so many people to talk to. Okay, I need to go to church first before I get too sidetracked. Does, like, City Hall, City Council, like, have a lot of say in what carnival-type things there would be? Because I live in an area- I live in an area where there's, like, a fair. And I just pictured the fair itself making those determinations, but I don't actually know. Breathe some fire already, dude. Oh. Howdy. You waiting for someone? waiting for something to happen. Well, I think I'm being stood up. A uh, date? Not the kind you mean. Honestly, a big part of my job is someone calling or someone calling me heading out and them not showing up. You were meeting them at the statue of Saint Rubello. Are they talking about God, like, waiting for God to do something? Yeah, the fire-breathing guy, who, like, ate people. <laughs> That's a bit of an oversimplification. I like how May, this is just like how May processes and remembers information. It's like, is it violent? I'm going to remember the violence. But yeah, basically. Cool guy to have a statue of. Outside the church, I mean. Well, I didn't put it here, but can't we learn something from St. Rubello? Breathe fire or eat people. Both excellent options. I'm going to go with breathe fire. Sure. The statue is part of our Encourage Criminal Acts Outreach. I like how the pastor doesn't just, like, shame, blame, or guilt me for, like, how she talks about this stuff. It's more like, eh, I'm, you know, if this is what interests you, let's talk about it. It's working. How's the situation? The situation? With Bruce and stuff. Eh. We wait and see and pray. Is Bruce here? Hello? 
last jump is very tall. Hey, Bruce. You gonna go down to Horace tonight? Dunno. Maybe. Keep to myself. You should say hi if you're there. I'll be there. Okay. We'll see, I suppose. That's fair. Anything else interesting off to this side? Sometimes I don't know why I try. Because there's... Oh, there is! There's... There's interesting stuff. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hey. Traveler from distant lands. You have journeyed far. It has brought and it has brought you here to us. Actually, I walk like 15 minutes from my house. Walker, far from home. Walker, Texas Ranger. We will tell of our future, but first, be truthful. Tell us. I don't think I saw this in my first playthrough. Which of these have you seen? A shipwreck? Technically, when I first got to the town, right? A ghost on a hill. Do the clotheslines count? An arrow broken. That one I don't remember seeing. Broken? Really? I, um... You're all like 14-year-old cops. Why am I answering this? A shipwreck? The ghost? Or the broken arrow? The shipwreck feels like the most literal interpretation of something that I've seen. So let's go with that. On my way into town, in the playground, this old ship. How did you? You have answered well. We will peer into your future and give you what help we can in the coming dark. <laughs> what? Daylight savings ending? All right, go for it. Yeah, what? Daylight savings ending? Ha! 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 Do you like practice that talking and turn thing? Tell us first, what is God in this place? Wow. Uh, is it caring but absent? Uncaring but distant? Wasn't this what Rosa asked us about our granddad? No. Vicious and roaming. Can we go with nice and helpful? Okay, fine. Caring and absent. Like, similar, but not quite. The, it, the phrasing on this is so similar to what Rosa asked us about our grandfather. Or our father. Uncaring and distant. Vicious and roaming. Let's go with the one that's similar to what we said about our dad. The word distant stands out to me. Because so, I think that's what I picked. So uncaring and distant. I can see it on a distant shore. Beneath the stars. Okay. We see something in your future. We know. We know. We know. Okay, already. Geez. We will. You will swim out to sea and meet it on a distant shore. We're like six hours from the ocean. Yeah, but what about your dreams? We've been having these dreams about, like, a train. So can we have a dream about an ocean? You guys are bad at this. Let's try something easier. What am I going to have for dinner tonight? I don't know. Don't care. I want tacos. Yeah, the tacos thing from the other night. We'll have them soon. We'll all have tacos soon. Okay, well, I'm going to get going. Stop. Do you see the mystical symbol etched upon the sacred rock? I see a heart and the like anarchy symbol and something that looks like a potato and a skull. The pentagram you guys drew, the spooky pentagram you teens drew, <laughs> both of them are the same thing, but one of them is like spooky. Yes, good. Okay. They don't even like deny it. It is the first of three. Find it thrice, and it shall find you. In the dark? That's not creepy. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna head out. You guys are adorable and weird, but the fun kind of weird. <laughs> this is serious. Like, we're not kidding. We don't care or anything. Okay. But, like, dude. All right, all right. I'll keep an eye out for pentagrams and whatnot. And I, like... The one has an eye on their shirt. Cool. <laughs> you broke your speaking order. Um, no. <laughs> We're just going backwards and out. Are you freaking out yet? See how weird goth teens. You're not going to narc on us to the pastor, right? For being out here? <laughs> I don't think the pastor would care. <laughs> cool, thanks. Because if the pastor is so accepting... Three weird teens I met. If the pastor is so accepting of me, wouldn't the pastor be accepting of other people? I think the pastor would care more that they're like... Um, out on the ledge 
than anything else. Considering the conversation we had with our mother, do we want to talk to our mother now? That's a very important question. But also, I guess this is part of me that wants to say, let's try to talk to the mom. Because if we can get closure now, then we won't be spending the entire day wondering about it. Hey, mom, let's resolve our conversation from earlier. We're not. I'm busy. Okay, great. Could, could talk. Now, you know, there's the potential to ruminate on it all day. It's fantastic. I do get the feeling, though, that given some time, this family will resolve things. A day or so. I also wonder, with a family like this, what the dad will have to say? Like, what's the dad's role in this? How, Like, how often do these kinds of discussions or arguments come up? And what does the dad have to say about it? Because sometimes we have those families where like, if we're fighting with a parent, the other parent just automatically takes, like, you know, the, the other parent's side. So in this case, it might be that dad automatically takes mom's side. I don't know, though. I kind of imagine the dad kind of being like a peacekeeper between the two. So this is something that I'm curious about. Sorry, Pigeon, you're, you're always there. I'm always here. But that's something that I'm kind of curious about, too, is like how... How will the dad talk about this stuff? Oh, yeah, train. I think those are supposed to be weather stations. Pioneer scouts made them when we weren't playing football or learning about manhood. These are the manliest of miniature windmills for sure. So, oh, I can kind of do something with them. Fuck. I'm discovering so many things I didn't know are possible in this game. I, I can't. <gasps> the child isn't here! Where's, where's my, my horror loving friend? I don't, I don't know if I should visit my um, rat babies when I don't have food for them. I can squeeze them. I'll squeeze them and make them love me. It's not actually how love works. Oh, there's four of them. I will squeeze all of you. Okay, that's it. I am a terrible rat mother because I got caught stealing, which is not a sentence I say very often. Hmm. So where's the anarchy symbols? I don't see any anarchy. Doesn't mean it's not there, but I don't see it. Speaking of anarchy, hey, Aunt Ma Cop. Ma Cops don't carry guns, May. I mean, they could. I can't they? Jeez. I guess you need that gun for... What are you doing? Blocking off the road. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to do that without a gun. You might know how many times I've shot someone? No, tell me now. Once. You kill someone? No. So you're saying you don't really need it, then? should carry a battle axe. <laughs> that would be impressive. I'll look into it. <laughs> Coffee. What about the job situation? This is what this is this is what I want to eavesdrop in. What happened with the job? Aw, oh, everything is so great and harvesty, which is basically just a less spooky Halloween. Whatever, I just want to head home and get ready for tonight. I could just do that. Or I could wander a bit, take in the harvesty air. Well, I'll get home when I do. Yeah, I want to explore more, May. Yes, this is my mouse friend. You hype for harvest? Um, harvest is pretty dumb, right? This character, it feels like, has kind of people-pleasing tendencies where they're kind of gauging what they say, or they're, they're basing what they say off of the other person. So it's like, right? As in, like, I want to hear what you have to think about it, and, and then... Then I'll I'll match my opinion based off of that. I'm gonna go watch a bunch of old Dracula movies in the 60s. That actually sounds really cool. It is. Gonna get pizza too. Oh, I want a pizza now. Ugh. All to myself. Damn. Wow, you have life way more figured out than I did at your age. Really? What were you doing then? 
hanging out with really embarrassing places online. Ruining my life. Neither of these sound great. Let's go with the online one. Yep. See ya. Later. That's it. Hmm. I do feel like this, the one thing that this character is like passionate about by themselves, like regardless of what other people have to say around them, is the horror thing. That was the one thing where they were like, this is my thing. I like horror. <sighs> to the to the extent that they were like, this is this is what I really like. And I feel like the part that makes me sad about that is it also felt like they were saying like there was still that gauging around that. But they brought that up first, right? So like that was something that they brought up. I guess let me back that up. It seems like they really like that horror. Like, that's a genuine thing that they have an interest in. As in, it's not something that we brought up first. So it's not like we brought up the horror and then they mirrored it. They brought it up. I guess the part that makes me sad is that they... They then kind of, like, still... It feels like they're gauging the reactions of people around them to that. And it makes me wonder if they'll actually pursue it or not. And that's the part that makes me sad. It makes me sad to feel like people aren't pursuing what they really want to do. Or even as a hobby... Because again, you know, I've, I've said this before, but I, I totally get not pursuing it as a job if we feel like it's not going to pay the bills. Happy Halloween! <laughs> you too! You feeling spooky? Oh, extremely. Can't you tell? Do your spooky face. Because <laughs> you're just smiling. And it's adorable, not scary. Oh. Nice effort, though. <laughs> it's so cute. I like Angus. I like all these characters. They're very endearing. We are almost faster than a car. Go smelters, right? Is that is that what it is? You going to harvest? Nah, I'm gonna watch the game, of course. Is there a game tonight? Well, no, but I was gonna watch my favorite highlights. Wow. Why don't you come out? Might be good. Stretch your legs, see the parade. Ever see the game live? Oh. Nah, never. Wow. Coming out to harvest. You never know. Yeah, all right. Yeah, go smelters. Go smelters. They talk so much about the game. I kind of assumed that it was live. Isn't that how we usually talk about sports? I don't really watch sports. Nothing against it. It's just not my thing. So I guess it's just how I assume, like, my brain automatically assumed that it was just a live thing. So these are, like, pre-recorded games or highlights or things like that. Don't get me wrong, sometimes we, I'm assuming, watch pre-recorded games because if our schedules don't align or stuff like that. So that kind of puts this, that makes it, that makes it sadder. It feels like holding on to something that isn't there anymore kind of a thing. So the more time we spend in this town, the more we see past this like facade, it feels like. Hey man, how's things? Good. Harvest rush? No one's no one's in here. You missed it. The horror. Oh. I I done got horrored. Things horrored at work is the worst. Or when is this place busy? Think getting horrored at work is the worst. When I had that job that one time, I worked the longest night rush. You know, you've never mentioned having a job. Ugh, it's a story for another time. Anyway, you're here now, and I'm here now, and it's a lovely day. And I was worried I'd have to smash these light bulbs. Isn't that extremely unhealthy? Like, whatever stuff is in light bulbs is something that you're not supposed to inhale. All by myself. So what's up? Nothing, or uh, um, I'm very interested in this light bulb smashing. <clears throat> That does, that does sound like me. Hell yeah, dude. Oh my god, we're doing this. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm bad at sports. Oh, I have to move around. Okay, that explains it. That, that, that's, that's a big brain right there. Oh no, oh no. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Don't do this. These are like the- I'm pretty sure these are pretty dangerous to inhale. What? Jeez. Jeez me. 
You threw a bottle at my face. That, you should try hitting it with the bat. You should try throwing it in my general direction, please. In a way I can hit it. Please don't do this at home. I did the math on how much these things cost. It, is it just? What the F? Greg. I'm pretty sure this light bulb is 67 cents. They were actually more expensive. Hit it! Also, um, I would imagine it would not be very stable to stand on top of this thing while hitting a baseball bat. Is there a line that gets drawn every time you hit one on the thing? On the trash can? I did not notice that until the very end. <laughs> Smash! So, what's up? Nothing. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I thought my drink was going to explode. It didn't. Okay. I need to look for anarchy. And windmills. Which are feel very conflicting. Like, anarchy is chaos. Um, I don't think it's anarchy. I think it's a pentacle, pentagram. They look like anarchy. Um, and a windmill feels like calm. I also feel like I have been walking past the windmills for a long time, so my brain is probably used to glazing over them. So for all I know, I've just walked past one just now and haven't noticed. What's in the news? Halloween crime down this year. This <laughs> Halloween crime? What counts as Halloween crime? Burning stuff, vandalism, pagan stuff. Well, the night's young. Don't you do any pagan stuff out there? I'm gonna do all the pagan stuff. This is interesting because paganism is an actual like spiritual belief system. And so when they say pagan stuff, like it, this is a character who's reading it from the newspaper. And when I hear that, I'm sitting there going, what happened? Like, what actually is happening that the newspaper is going, oh, this is pagan stuff? Like, was it, I don't know, something getting burned? And they're like, oh, this is burned in a very specific way, therefore it's pagan? I'll call the cops if you do any pagan stuff. Cops got nothing on demons and hell spirits. Ugh. I also feel like paganism um, has a, a lot of negative connotations to it, despite it being a. Fuck. Despite it being a, a spiritual belief system, it gets associated with a lot of negative things that I don't think it's actually that is actually accurate. There's seriously no anarchy. Oh, there's a windmill. Okay, how do I get to the windmill? Okay. What? Can I jump on the diner roof? <gasps> oh! Okay. I mean, I love platforming. Platforming games are the best. They're not frustrating at all. <clears throat> Hey, you are a cat. Shouldn't you, like, be able to hold on to things like nobody's business? <laughs> Unless you're like my cat with cat, with cat claw covers. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do this, May. Oh, we did it! Power of positive self-talk. What is this? What is that? Are we like sending letters off? I don't know. Where's our anarchy symbols? I don't know where they are. I mean, 
Oh, could they be... Down here? No. I guess all that's left to do is go home then to technically get ready for harvest. <laughs> hey mom, I'm home! <laughs> We ready to have a conversation about earlier today? No. Nobody's here. I think this is this the first time we've come home and like nobody's been here. Not mom, not dad. Okay, so we can check out the computer. We can play again. Let's not and say we did. <laughs> Sharkles, that's high. Okay, well, we're getting ready for harvest. I don't know what that means, but it's gonna be amazing. Oh yeah, normal clothes. Oh yeah, time to get spooky. Oh, it's amazing, sweet. Witch dog, witch, witch dog. Uh... Oh, it's okay. Nobody to talk to. That sounds really sad as I say that. But we're going to go to harvest, and it's going to be fun. We're going to have so much fun. It feels like I'm forcing that. But we will. And we're not going to drink, right, May? No drinking. Nobody's home. Hello? I must be already be out. Harvest! Harvest? Has it already been harvest? Has it been that way the whole time and I've been reading it wrong? What is going on? Also, is that the first time the cat's been awake? I can't jump. I suppose that makes sense. Fortune! I want the fortune! Fortune? Fortune or splash him? Fortune. Dare you spin the wheel of destiny? Fuck yes. Explain. <laughs> I think I'm gung ho. I feel like May's role and my role just reversed for a second. I was like, fuck yes, let's do it. And May's like, you should probably explain this a little more. No, none can explain the power of the wheel. Say that it is an unknown circular sooth slayer. It's a, it's a wheel. It's like wheel of fortune. Oh snap, is this gonna say, say the sooth? The sooth shall be said. This is a lot of alliteration. Okay, I'm into this. I pushed the wrong button. At, for like the first billion time. Cool, seven. I like the number seven. And there's the three. Is your arm injured? No, but we did find an arm. It's a little sore lately, actually. I can tell. I see it all. Your fortune. Y you, you fortune is your fortune. What? A place you will soon be forever. Okay, that checks out. Your card says much. A great circle. An orb. But flat. Your thoughts shall be consumed by it, and yet you shall devour it. It's like pizza. Oh, again, pizza. Pizza with pepperoni. Those would all be round things. Slammer cakes at Donut Wolf. Oh, or donuts. Those are all circles. I feel like things like this are something where like we just get the slightest hint. It's like horoscopes, right? We get to just get the slightest hint of something that is extremely vague, and then our brain fills in the rest of it. Just like how I was like, oh yeah, but like pepperoni pizza, that's round. A round thing within a round thing. And donuts, those are round things. My fortune is I'm gonna eat pizza or donuts or something. I mean, that's good, but I expected something more mystical or something. The cards do not lie. The wheel that crosses the table is unknowing, unknowable. So this is unknowable truth. You have learned much, child. I'm 20. Well, that was interesting. May the wheel ever spin in your favor. All right, then. That's fantastic. I wonder how many different fortunes there technically are, although I imagine they're very similar. Hold up. Colleen, how do I get into this thing? God damn it. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Welcome to Har- it is Harfest. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Spectacular water balloon toss. You know what to do. Or I can figure it out pretty quick. Okay, let's go. 
I get to actually throw water balloons at them? I'm a scary spirit and I've been hit! I'm gonna haunt you for that. I mean, if this would actually stop them from haunting... I'm extremely cold and wet. <laughs> ah! From haunting Bruce? Haunting. Oh no, I'm dead again! I mean, like, that would be worth it. Oh no, you've hit the evil witch! Ah! Evil witch, where will I go next? <gasps> that was already moved. I'm gonna hex you up! Ah! Rude. Oh no, I'm melting! Run away! Are you a potato? Can you please stop moving? Ah! <laughs> Oops, I'm the pumpkin! I kind of hit him once. Yeah, twice! You hit me, the pumpkin! The one time you don't move? Yeah! Rattle, rattle on the skeleton. No wonder they were like, are you eight? Stop! <laughs> Clickety clack, you hit my bones. Stop. I can't throw it again. Well, that sure was something. On behalf of the Possum Springs Town Council, we urge you to support local business and enjoy our historic home. Possum Springs, more like... Kathleen, no. More like Awesome Springs, more like Lame Springs, that what she was gonna say. Okay, we're done. <laughs> awesome Parade! So cool. Is that a giant pumpkin? Is someone singing? <laughs> okay, so I can go into the pickaxe because there's that play or whatever. Oh, this one was on their phone. Hey, hey! What you up to? Seriously? We're putting on this year's Harvest Pageant. Oh, right, okay. Live from the old pickaxe. When's this thing supposed to start? Uh, ten minutes, I think. You think? Ugh, this is a nightmare. Why did I ever agree to this? Chamber of Commerce owes me big for this. Jeez, I hear ya. What? Okay, so here's the thing. You won't have many lines. Fuck. What? I've had like three no-shows. Why? Because this whole thing is stupid and nobody cares about it. But, or B. Please. It's a fun part. B. Yeah. I will totally save your ass. <laughs> I might have memorized this from when I was a kid. Might have. Might have. Right. Probably not. They rewrote it like six times in the past years. Fuck. To be spookier. So it's like 20% actual history now. Wow. And like 80% spooks. So it's like fake history now? <laughs> it's, it's not fake news. It's fake history. Okay, weird. So it's like fake history now. It's like the bad remake that doesn't respect the source material. So when they take a book and make it into a movie... It starts off normal, but gets anyway. You got like five minutes to look at your lines. I should preface this by saying, just preface that comment before by saying, I feel like book readers are the ones who might feel like that defensive because it's like, I love this thing and I want you to do justice to this thing that I love. And then it feels like no matter how good the book or the movie is, it never feels like it actually does justice to the book. It's just how it works. Psh, I can wing it. May, please don't wing it. I mean, that feels like what May does, though. Okay. What are we doing right now? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I didn't see there. B.E. Ghosts? 
like how B is in her same like shirt as always. Like her she didn't change is not in a costume. Everybody else is just fur hats on. Are ye here to hear the tale of how Possum Springs came to be? <laughs> Through the mists of time, I see weary fur trappers from 1793. Brother John. Yes, Brother Stephen. From this vantage point, I do spy a deep hollow and within a great dead tree and besides with a, which a spring. Besides are we Brother Stephen, for truly my throat is parched from these long and arduous travels and carrying these 300 beaver pelts. Let us make haste, so excellent brother. Ho, travelers, help an extremely old woman. Old woman. Or ho, travelers, spare a crust of bread for a needy woman. Th this, this one. Ho, travelers, spare a crust of bread for a needy woman. I don't know which one is right or wrong. We're winging it. This is winging it. Haggard witch. That's rude. That's rude. Horrible to look upon. How dare you? How dare you? May and I are not haggard. Cruel young men. Thank you. You did not even offer one of thine 300 fine beaver pelts to warm thy ancient bones. I shall curse ye and thee, or thou art a rude and naughty boy. <laughs> I kind of like that one, but I feel like this one is the one I should go with. Thou art a rude and naughty boy. That was the wrong choice. Thy naughtiness must be met with punishment. Makes me think of, there's one episode of Curse the Cowardly Dog. That's what that makes me think of. I are uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that episode of Courage goes. Yep. Um, thy punishment is a curse. Thy punishment is a task terrible. I feel like curse is what we should go with. Thy punishment is a curse. <laughs> that goofy laugh. It's like the sharkle. That shall take thee, take ye and thee, even this very night. Yee -hee -hee -hee. I was bo born among these trees near the harvest moon, and ye shall die under that moon. Brother John, I am frightened. Faith, Brother Stephen, art thou so easily shaken by the ramblings of an old crone? Again, that's rude. That's, that's a rude choice. Come, help me carry these 300 beaver pelts. But little did anyone know that the witch did not curse in vain. <laughs> I don't, I don't curse in vain either, but my curses are <laughs> words like shit. <laughs> I don't think that's what they meant. <laughs> oh, no, there's more. <laughs> help, help! Who will help a poor traveler? <laughs> Greg. Uh, um, uh, by the moon and stars above us, sir, I beseech thee, what is thy trouble? You're in this. Yep. Ah, uh, witch! Yep. <laughs> I swear thee, fiend, that this very day, this horrifying crone, again, that's rude, did curse my brother and I to die. Zwoons! We camped by this very spring beneath the dead tree, and even now his body lieth upon the earth, lifeless as a pile of 300 beaver pelts. Oh, it chilleth the heart. <laughs> a curse upon rude young men. They are. They were very rude. I did curse this spring. Yeah, a curse upon rude young men. I don't. I think it's a curse upon the spring, but I'm. I'm. Mm. They were rude. <laughs> That's not. Um. I know it's not. It's not technically the correct option, but it was not untrue. She has cursed the spring, and now I shall die. Bye. Wow. I am also undone, for I have drank of the water. The electrified water? Don't leave me here, Greg. Bye. <laughs> and yet, even there, the curse's lust for blood would not be sated. <laughs> the fun roll that, like, nobody else wanted. That lasts the longest.
I also like how this is a tool shop and there's a saw above the doorway. Gaze upon them, gaze upon these spirits. Brother, we are now ghosts. Ah, I'm tormented by the accusing glare of 300 ghostly beavers. It would seem that all who die here are cursed to never leave. Oh, so what was it, old Joe or whoever that the kids talked about? Is that the same concept? Doth that witch know what she hath done? Probably. Uh, um, crap. Four score and seven years ago? For what is a ghost? For each man is determined on his path. Let's go to this one. And each path leads only to his end. Okay. And yet each path may lead to places unknown. What the f- what are you doing here? You! From the bus station! Young witch, it is I, the god of the forest! The one that I shot at y y yesterday? Uh, just didn't expect you to. Ain't that the way. So, witch, thou hast tarried too long in this world. I banish thee to wander in the night through the stranger places. Oh god, how did you know? I what? Yeah, oh god, how did you know? Young witch, let me speak wisdom to you. We begin and we end at night in the woods. In the woods! But that is not the whole of the story. Oh. This is your line. Forest god, thou hast no power here. How do you know so much about me? <laughs> uh... How do you know so much about me, young witch? Is that the correct answer? Young witch, I know more than thee could ever know, for I am as old as these trees. Wow. Beware as you go, for there are ghosts. Ooh. Take care. He's an interesting character. Just pops in and out. And so was founded then this festival. On Halloween, we shall celebrate the dying of the year and the founding of Possum Springs. I, Mayor Ghost, decree it. <laughs> the Bieber population suffered a decline, and now our biggest exports are corn and pumpkins. <laughs> we used to be the county seat. Now leave before I curse you all. Now leave before I curse you all are laughing. Let's go with that one. Oh no, audience, and that's our show. Be careful as you leave here, for who knows what may lurk in the darkness. And also be sure to pick up a flyer on your way out from the Possum Springs Chamber of Commerce. Support your local spooky businesses. So I picture her saying that. Like, I don't really want to say this. Except, like, her, she is a local business. But, like, how many times would people have heard this by the time they got to this play? Jeez, thanks guys. I am never doing that again. So what are we doing now? Well, I'm going home. Angus is making dinner and we're gonna watch horror movies. Ooh, this sounds good. Can I come? It's more a date thing? Oh. What are you doing, B? Chamber of Commerce, Commerce folks are going to the buffet up by Ham Panther. Kinda have to go, business stuff. I hate this. But you're good at it. Both of those things can be true. Uh, two things can be true at the same time. Can I come? Nope. Okay, well, so this is more of that feeling of everybody else is going off and doing whatever it is that they're doing. Like, Greg is going off and doing relationship things. And B is going off doing business things. So, like, successful in their own way. And it's like, I can't join. Oh, well, good night. Good night. So, how are we going to spend the rest of the night, then? Do we just go home? This is garbage. What the fuck is that? That's what I just said! Oh my god. Hey, anyone? Shit. No, mate. Don't. No. Mm. We don't run towards the danger. Oh, the food donkey. Heart of the hometown. Not anymore. Where the hell did he go? 
Shit, can we go back? Although I suppose it's not much of a game if we always just run away from danger. Are you wearing a miner's hat? May, go home. There's a guy up there on the hill. He stole some kid. He looked like a ghost. A ghost, huh? Or something like that? May, you shouldn't be out here doing whatever it is you're doing. No, no one should be out here, but there's this guy. I'll drive you home, May. No, May, now. Did her aunt look up the hill? Like, is this a real thing? Is this a real ghost, a real person? I can't go to the right. This is, I'm assuming, a dream. And it is a weird dream. I cannot jump. It's very red. Which implies that scary things are going to happen. Our communication is not just verbal. Our communication, we also communicate through symbols and colors and things like that. And red is often used to communicate scary things or anger or things like that. Was that breathing? Oh, I don't like that breathing. That breathing makes me uncomfortable. <sighs> this is like a different version of the wake up music. Oh, what happened in this part of the game? We had a section where May had an argument with her mom. And it's the first time we've really had an argument between this, like parts of this family. I feel like we all have arguments with our parents at one point or another. It's just unrealistic to expect that we always get along with family. And I'm eager to see how that this argument will be resolved. I said before that I really, I really want to stick up for this family. Not just stick up, but I really want to, I really want to hope that they will still, that, that they are, I, that they actually are as supportive as they initially seem. And that it's not the game saying, um, oh, here they are, like they seem supportive and then kind of pulling the rug out from under me kind of a thing. Um, so I feel this need to um, give them benefit of the doubt, hoping that they will continue to be supportive. And I feel like how we resolve arguments is a part of that too. You know if we can come together and say, hey, I'm sorry for this, how can we resolve that? To me, that's also a measure of how supportive a family is or any kind of relationship, really. So I feel like this is the first time we've seen some kind of a, some kind of a tension and also some time where the family has openly pointed out, like you haven't really said what happened at college. Because a lot of times when the family talks about it, it's it's basically saying, hey, um, you can talk about it when you're ready. And then there's been implications about the job, like, hey, are you ready to get a job? How about that job? And and I don't necessarily blame them about that because like they don't know what happened. So a job feels like the next measure of success and we want our kids to be able to pay bills in the future. So I feel like that's the next logical thing to try to encourage kids to do. But this is the f that argument was the first time that May's mom was openly saying you haven't talked about this and so there was a lot within that argument and I'm eager to see how that gets resolved or discussed um, I also feel like this is the first part of the game where there is some kind of external motivator some type of external plot point there was a figure who just kidnapped a kid and there was all these talk about ghosts leading up to it 
And of course, there's stuff with the arm before that. So it's kind of like, what is what is this? Is this really a ghost? Is this a person? Who knows? But that's the first kind of really external plot point that is really going to be interesting to see what happens because we've also had that that character Casey who just the implication is that they draw that they hopped on a train and left but we don't know that for sure and there are these wanted posters so there's a, a part of me that wonders if that is a similar situation were they kidnapped too <laughs> that's not a great thought so I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the game and the video and then I will see you guys next time